properties. So in this video, you are going to learn more about talent planning process, okay? So uh, in RC Refining uh, checkpoints, I already mentioned that uh, after all the steps, like for planning methodology, the last two steps is actually involving your talent planning. So I'll go into deeper in telling you like uh, the logic of talent planning and then so that uh, you can be more prepared for uh, MRD as well, okay? So uh, I think one thing to let you know definitely is uh, talent planning is always more than just identifying HR gap. So if you take your previous experience uh, of doing talent planning, most probably the end objective of you wanted to get is just to identify the, the people that you need to be, uh, you need to recruit uh, during spring MRD for previous MRD, right? So it's the same for OC volunteer and it's the same for right now, like for, for MRD. So one thing that I want to bring you in this perspective is that it's definitely more than just uh, identifying HR gap, especially when looking into the timeline, uh, you are just going into your second semester and what's next after second semester is your succession planning. So uh, you are going to hand over your term to the next uh, bunch of people and uh, is more than that. So in the words like by explaining by itself, talent planning is not only, uh, you know, you do it for the sake of recruitment, but it's also involving the movement of talent. But uh, today definitely we'll be uh, going through more about how the first step, it gets started with your recruitment. Okay? So uh, if you look at the first steps, definitely uh, for why talent planning, first is to make sure that uh, you have a very clear structure. So Determining structure is one of uh, the way that we can ensure that our operation runs smoothly. Okay, so without a structure most of the time is that people wouldn't know uh, their role, people wouldn't understand their JD, and at the same time, uh, when you are determining structure, your structure should be able to support your strategy's implementation based on the goals that you have set. Okay, so where can you refer to? Definitely is the structure revision based on tier, and What's more yet that you can refer to is your growth strategy. So if you have any doubts in what kind of strategies are going to be implemented in each function, uh, I also compiled like growth strategies uh, in the talent planning tool itself. So anything that you want regarding uh, the resources that you want to find from MC, these are the things that we can provide to you. Okay, so after you get the structure very clear, second thing that you have to understand is uh, how to evolve the roles. So summer peak and winter peak, so maybe there might be a bit different in terms of roles and also in terms of your uh, JD. So one thing for sure to take note is that when you are evolving the roles, it's not only for members, but it can be also for team leaders. So for example, winter peak is always the more uh, challenging peak compared to summer peak for like 50% majority of your of the LCs. Then things to take note here is definitely when you are talking about, when we are talking about evolving the roles other than looking into successional planning element, one thing to take note is that your talent review process is mandatory and necessary as well. Okay, why is it so? You don't want to recruit, definitely you don't want your members, uh, your newbies that are just newly being recruited uh, for like was being lead by people, uh, is going to be lead led by people who are not good at all, okay? So therefore, it's very important to make sure that your talent review process happens also at directors or VPs layer so that you can fire necessary uh, spoiled apple in the team and so when your newbies are being recruited, you can at least make sure that the first process uh, ensuring that they have a good environment to work is there. Okay, so other than that, it's also to look into uh, what are the possible ways that uh, you can evolve the role so that you can include uh, more of pipeline nurturing element in your uh, structure itself. So for example, it can be, uh, for example, for PM, uh, you can have, uh, instead of having you or your directors to, uh, if you don't have directors, that instead of having you to handle get process, then maybe you will want to create an extra opportunity for your OCPs, or for, for recruiting OCP to be uh, in charge of get process, then maybe that can be one of your pattern nurturing opportunity because people will get more ex exposure towards uh, PM process, okay? So uh, the next thing is develop a chart. So it's very simple as it's related 
relates to uh, the previous two steps. After you determine the structure, after you know how it works, after you know, uh, after you know like how you are going to evolve the roles and uh, communication, then you have to double a chart. So this would be the typical organizational chart that we have been using for two times. One is now, last time was NEBM for succession planning. So the reason of developing a chart is definitely to to visualize uh, how it looks like in an organization regarding the communication line and reporting line. So uh, you can definitely refer to title planning too. So uh, the idea of it is to make sure that everyone is very clear who to report to and uh, what they are responsible uh, with. Okay. Then the last step, step is uh, adapt to go. So it's definitely your structure and uh, talent review. So uh, this is just the first step for us to make sure that you know, like we have our system in place, but what's more important is the consistent review of structure and talent. So, uh, just touch it, okay? I don't want to jinx it, but uh, imagine if uh, after you go through your MRD, you wanted to recruit 10 people to fill out your spot, but you end up only have five. So, is that the end of the day? Like, uh, it's not necessary. So, maybe what you need to do is just to restructure your JD or restructure your, uh, your, your own... Uh, Sorry, restructure your structure is sounds very good. So, but you can do that definitely, so that you can evolve more roles to take up more uh, responsibilities. That can also be one of the way. So, yeah. So, if you look into how it works for talent planning, this is all. Okay. So, I'm going to show you a bit also on, uh, like how it looks like in the talent planning tool. Okay. So, if you look into uh the tool itself, it if you look at the preface, this is how it looks like for this structure. Okay, so uh, it includes all of the functions uh, structure based on tiers. So for PM and FL, is more is being separated based on the condition of LCs. Okay, so uh, so I won't put in uh, the instruction here. Try to use this to step a uh, watch this video. Yes, you are in the right track, or you can refer to uh, here. Okay. So what's next is that after that, uh, if you want to refer more for your functional video, just click into this link. So in this link, you are going to look for, uh, like you will have different functions uh, explanation video about uh, the structure itself. So uh, I'm, I'm still in the process of collecting. It will definitely be more, it will be a full functions video. Okay, don't worry about it. Then next, oops, okay. So after that, uh, you would need to identify your current LC states, which means like to know like what is the number of memberships that you have, productives, and goals. So this is where uh, you look up into, uh, this is the discussion that you have to have to understand like what is your uh, goal for next peak and how uh, which tier does your product fall into. Okay, then you can start talking about that. So how to generally how to use this spreadsheet is very easy. So if you look at it, right, everything is there, uh, with very comprehensive uh tiering system. So what you need to do is that just keep the tab that you need for your LC and delete or hide the rest of it because you don't need the rest. Okay. So uh, just simple as that. So for example, if uh my LCs are running OGT and I I'm in tier four, and I will just delete the rest of tier 3, tier 2, and tier 1, or I can hide it if I want to take it as reference. So for me, delete it as uh, it would be clearer for your people also. Okay, so uh, that would how it looks like. So the third step is uh, to fill out the tool with names and identify the HR gap that you have in LC. So how it looks like is that, as the same example, tier 4. So for example, uh, I'm from KP, okay? So for example, my LCVP OJT name uh, Dana. So I will just put it there, and then I have two members. So maybe the first member's name is Sinyi, second member's that uh, I have is, okay, I forgot. So let's, for example, uh, Jane, okay? And then, uh, but what if uh, I have more members than, if you have more members and you want to uh, keep the members, you think uh, that's still a bit of flexibility that you can do. So you, you would just need to add another column and maybe you put uh, lead, for example. Okay, but if, uh, because this would be the proposed structures that uh, we have towards the, the number of uh, exchanges that you run. So it also depends on how many uh, 
like how many exchanges that you run. So if you have more than that, or if you're aim to add more than that, definitely you can add, you can refer to other tier structure. Okay? So all the JDs will be explained here specifically like what does uh, your member JD looks like and who's the team leaders. Okay? So with this, the idea of it is that it can be very clear to show like who's your direct team leaders and uh, what is your JD and how it looks like in your structure. So the thing about it is, uh, okay, let me, so uh, remember to really put down the names because I think somehow people think that it's not necessary, but uh, imagine if, uh, you know, your, your other VPs would be curious like how the structure would look like. It would add a lot, or uh, even for yourself, is that uh, it would be a very good reference for you as VPPM to know uh, how every members are being placed in their own function and sub-function. Okay, so uh, with that, is that for example, then you fill out the names and then you realize that there's one empty spot. So this is the HR gap that you need to fill in. Okay, so for example, uh, maybe for KP is that you are running, you right now you have three members, but uh, you, you uh, in winter peak, you might be having time realization, then maybe you might need to in, uh, recruit one more. So it also depends on uh, how much do you think that your members can handle in terms of capacity. So if you already have this uh, four person in the team, then maybe you just need to recruit one. So the, your HR gap would be equal to one. Okay, so uh, so this is a bit of manual countdown that you have to do. So if, for example, if you have one here, then if you look at the next steps, once you identify it, then you have to fill in it in your talent planning dashboard. So this is the dashboard. So for example, if for OGT, okay, if for OGT I have one gap, then uh, this is how it looks like. Okay, so one thing to take note, I also put it there, is that uh, one thing to take note is that your this dashboard is only served for uh, serve to identify your members' gap. It's for your uh, recruitment usage. Okay, so therefore, uh, if you have any vacant in your team leader's role, host a space with your EBS team to discuss the way forward for having your members to fill out the vacant. So this, in this aspect, is that uh, if you still remember, this is definitely part of evolving the role. So are you going to evolve the role or are you going to assign your members to be uh, the team leaders or do you, are you going to have another uh, director's application? So it's up to your choice, definitely. But one thing for sure is that, uh, one thing for sure is that uh, please do not uh, simply assign members who are not capable to be your team leaders, okay? You have to think in a longer picture on how are you going to include succession planning element into it so that at the same time of uh, enabling the experience or opportunities for your members, you are building uh, the next generation to be able to take up this role as well. So uh, once don't kill two birds, okay? So don't put more thoughts in it when you are planning for it so that uh, you don't waste the opportunity like that, okay? So, and then uh, go with each of your function. This is the definitely the layout. Put down your HR gap. And then this is the part where uh, it's also like clearly mentioned here. These are all the conversions that, oops, okay, these are all the conversions that you need to put it down. So uh, in this calculation, then it will suggest like how many people that you have to do. And then uh, to total up here, it will how it looks like until the end, okay? So this is how it looks like. And this is the conversion rate that you have to put it down so that uh, the formulas can uh, be automated. So just take note, okay? So if you have problem in uh, identifying your your conversion rate, for me is that uh, your your predecessor was uh, for four previous four MRD. What I remember is that uh, your predecessor did have a copy of that report. So make sure that you look up to the report and put it down the conversion rate, okay? Ideally is that you compare your four MRD uh, recruitment drive data with your four MRD data, but not like cross-checking with spring and fall because it might be a bit different. So uh, that's the case. If you really couldn't find it, uh, you can definitely take uh, the ideal, uh, your previous spring MRD uh, conversion data, okay? So uh, this would be it. And then the last phase is that uh, you can definitely case start your team building for each team if you already done your reallocation and also start your MRD planning. So this is just the first step for you to identify who are the people in the office that you need to recruit 
And what's next more importantly is that they are still uh, will be launching an educational series for that. And I've been telling this for two weeks. And for sure, uh, this is going to be launched okay, together with this video. So, yep. Uh, take note of the timeline and uh, definitely you'd want to fall behind the timeline because uh, that is very timeline sensitive and uh, please make sure that uh, you know like we are recruiting people also for uh, these two months to make sure that we uh, we have people who are doing sales for even GT or GV is the same thing. Uh, people are doing sales and uh, your OGV attraction is being taken care of even if it's during semester break. So if you have any problem with that, make sure that relocation happens. Uh, temporarily relocation is happening uh, so that we can take care of both peaks. Okay, for IGV, it's already been solved through OC volunteer. So if you still have problem in structuring your uh, OC team, make sure that uh, you approach us for more consultancy places, okay? Yep, that's all. Thanks, Pete.